Brett Wright's there, both Queens of Daytime here at ITV, but now Alison Hammond and Kate Garraway have teamed up for a very special reason. Well, they've travelled all over the world, from Bristol to London to Jamaica, all in the bid to uncover their ancestry. So the last time I was here, it was with my mum in 2019. Oh, you're English, you grew up in England. But did you find that when she came here, she suddenly became more Oh, Jamaican. she became a different woman. Did she? Oh, yeah, as soon as she came to the border, she talked to them. Did she? She'd say, um, you know, this is my home. I'm a Jamaican, you know. And she'd always, everyone knew she was English, but she always used to say, but I, you know, this is where I live. <laughs> this is my home. <laughs> this is my home. Can I have it cheaper, please? <laughs> <laughs> well, they both join us now, and it's lovely to have ah, you welcome, both here. welcome, welcome, welcome. And Kate, welcome. you've actually, you have actually known each other. I know you've had some pretty spectacular nights out. You've known each other for a long <laughs> time, but not actually worked together before. Never. No. It was really exciting, wasn't it, Alison? Um, it was sort of like the two of us unleashed ish. It was the best time. I think we both needed a break, <laughs> didn't we, as well? And going off to yeah. Jamaica together was just incredible. Mm. It, was, it was so nice to see Kate in her environment. Even though she was working, she was, like, constantly doing stuff. She's like a doer, this woman. We were constantly waiting. She was, like, talking to Derek and just juggling. The amount of juggling and things that I saw you doing was just an eye-opener for me of how much this woman well, goes you've through. You've both had tough times recently. Yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, we know about Derek, what happened with Kate. My mum had died in 2020. Uh, I'd lost my dad in 2020 as well. So I think it was the right time to do this. Do you, do you not think, Kate, it was the right yeah, time to do I this? Yeah, I do. And I think, I mean, I think both of us have always been interested in where the heck we come from uh, and how we became the people we are. And um, I guess as well, particularly you, Alison, with your mum and dad's passing, there was a sense of wanting to know more yeah. about that and keep keep it real. And, and for me as well, it's just, you know, the, the, the fascination of, um, of just the, the journey that we went on. I mean, I, I, I did it partly really, to be honest, to be with Alison because I knew her story was going to be Amazing. <laughs> and it really is. And it really was. I knew I was going to be a little bit boring, but hers was amazing. Well, it wasn't boring. It was really it isn't boring, boring at all. We'll come to yours in a moment, but let's start with you first yes. of all, Alison, then, because we saw that you ended up in Jamaica. Yes. And really fascinating about your history, because you've got family who campaigned very early on yeah. for human rights. Yeah, so my great-great-grandfather, his name was Jean-Marie Escoffrey. I mean, the name in itself no. is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so him and his business partner, they were like merchants and they were really successful in their own right. They didn't need to do anything else, but they're also campaigners for free people of colour. So they'd help them with their rights and like voting rights and stuff like that, do loads of campaigns. God, how amazing. People absolutely love them. But obviously with something like that, you get enemies. And the governor of Jamaica, mm decided that they were going to get arrested and taken off the island. And remember, it was part of Britain. They were British citizens, essentially. And they were literally, in the middle of the night, taken from their businesses. They weren't allowed to go home, see their families. So him and his business partner were taken. No um, clothes, nothing. They couldn't say like, goodbye to their families. He was a family man, went to church. Oh and they literally got put on a ship and Absent taken to the Dominican Republic. And all they had was nothing. And they had their watches. So they sold their watches and they made their way back to England. Because obviously that's where, yeah. you know, um, the House of Parliament was. Yeah. They found somebody who believed their story. They campaigned for it and they went to court and they actually won in the Houses of Parliament. They won the case. They won £16,000, which is about, I don't know, what's about £15 million, pounds, Kate? Oh, yeah. my God. They it's actually won the I mean, case. Yeah, it, basically, her family is um, her ancestors changed the course of black rights. Yeah, I mean it's literally that simple. That's and, incredible. And uh, through absolute determination, absolute cleverness, absolute sort of sacrifice and fighting, and I think we all recognise that in Alison as well, don't Absolutely. we? Because yeah. the DNA Did you there. know any of that? No. Did your mum know any? Well, of she that? always wanted to find out about her father because she didn't know very much about that side before she died. She was like, I'd love to know my history. Oh. So the only sad side of this is that, that she doesn't yeah. know yeah. what happened. But honestly, there's so much more to the story, yeah. so many more mm. cliffhangers that happened and so many problems that he went along the, on the way. Well, Kate, it's, it's wonderful that you were both together because you think, Right, OK, well, your story, this is unbelievable history, this important history yeah. in Jamaica, but there was a Jamaican connection for you. Yeah! <laughs> yeah, I know. 
So, basically, um, Alison's ancestors changed the horse course of human history, and it turns out I'm related to a stuffed toy, Paddington Bear. <laughs> no one's surprised at this. Um, but in terms of the Jamaican connection, I'll explain the Paddington Bear in a moment. Uh, the Jamaican connection was amazing, because obviously I felt like my story was done by the time we headed off to Jamaica. Um, but it turns out that, that one of my ancestors on my mother's side, not that far away, actually, so it was during the Second World War, uh, a cousin, um, was the inspiration for James Bond because he was picked, he was a, a tomato picker in Guernsey and he was picked because of his brilliance of, of swimming and his sense of duty uh, to be in a new task force set up by Ian Fleming. Oh he was a military God, commander wow. at the time. And so um, they picked him and a group of other very young men who did these extraordinary missions, one of which... The first one was called Goldeneye, uh -huh. uh, which of course then became one of his yep. books. And uh, and the, he went to his grave, my ancestor, George Robbins, he went to his grave never telling his story because he believed so much in secrecy. So none of us knew about it. None That's of us knew incredible. about it at all until it came out. So, yeah. so go good. back to the Paddington thing because that is, I mean, <laughs> I have to say, that is the coolest thing ever, She's very similar way. to Paddington. I'm so glad. <laughs> I mean, I can't see the similarity because Paddington is chaotic and untidy. He means well, but everything goes wrong. I don't see the connection myself to me. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's through Michael Bond. So one of my cousins is the daughter of Michael Bond, the author. And she says that he is literally my cousin too because she grew up with Paddington Bear as initially just a toy they had at the table. They'd have breakfast with him. Michael was clever when, you know, when they didn't eat their greens, say, come on, Paddington is. Mm. And it, it became this amazing character who um, then has entertained us all for generations, hasn't These it? These are great and stories. I, I loved him. Yeah. I loved him as I well. When I was in college, I used to nick um, the marmalade and bread from the breakfast, which was free, make myself marmalade sandwiches and eat them all day. And people say, get you, Paddington. And I also, I love the fact that you're more Scottish, Alison, than Kate is. So, yeah, do you know what? That is the funny thing. I've got to show you all the stuff that I'm related to. And this kind of, like, represents anyone who is from Jamaica, like, all their ancestry and where, why it all happened. But, yeah, I'm more Scottish than Kate Galloway. I'm 16% Scottish, right? But check this out. So, I'm from Benning and Togal, 22%. Uh, Nigeria, 21%. Scot I'm Scottish, 16%. Cameroon, Congo, 12%. Uh, I'm German, 5%. English, I'm 4%. Uh, Senegal, 3%. Ivory Coast, Ghana, 3%. Jewish, 2%. Mali, 1%. Uh, Southern India, 1%. Sweden, Denmark, 1%. Norway, 1%. Greece, Albanian, 1%. I mean, I am you are. a national treasure. It was the treasure. biggest <laughs> ever. It was the biggest what? ever collection it's they'd ever had. Basically, Alison represents the world. Yeah, yeah. Oh, one hundred percent. Wherever I go, Listen, I'm going home. We've got seconds to go, but I just want to say as well, uh, good luck both of you at the NTAs. Oh, Obviously, you're you. the best presenter. Thank you. you have got your one, thank which is you. author documentary as well. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, the voting is good over luck. now. So, good luck. come on, girls. And DNA Journey is tomorrow at 9 it's on be amazing. ITV. Thank, Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Lovely to see you. Thank you.